So as Tim just said, intelligence is not just something that happens inside individual brains. It also arises in groups of people. We define collective intelligence as groups of individuals working together in ways that seem intelligent. Now, by this definition, collective intelligence has existed for a very long time. Armies, companies, countries, families, these are all examples of groups of people working together in ways that at least sometimes seem intelligent. But in the last few years, we've seen some examples of very new kinds of collective intelligence <coughs> enabled by the internet. To take advantage of, or consider Google, uh, where you have millions of people creating websites, linking those websites to each other. This information is harvested by the Google algorithms so that when you type a question in the Google search bar, the answers you get often seem amazingly intelligent. Or think of Wikipedia, where thousands of people all over the world have created a very large and very high quality intellectual product with almost no centralized control. To take advantage of possibilities like this, we need to understand them much better. And that's our goal in the MIT Center for Collective Intelligence. The core research question we ask ourselves is how can people and computers be connected so that collectively they act more intelligently than any person, group, or computer has ever done before? To answer that question well, we need to identify the core building blocks or design patterns that can be combined in different ways to generate different kinds of collective intelligence. We call these design patterns genes, and we've been mapping the collective intelligence genomes of a number of today's most innovative organizations. We've identified a starting set of about 20 of these genes, the basic categories of which are shown here. In essence, Every activity needs to have genes to specify what's being done, who's doing it, why they're doing it, and how they're doing it. For instance, the worldwide community of people that develop the Linux open source operating system embody what we call the crowd gene, because anyone in a large crowd can contribute software for that system. But it also embodies the hierarchy gene, because only Linus Torvalds and a few others can decide which of those contributions actually gets included in the next version of the system. In addition to classifying examples, we're also creating new ones. In one project on climate change, for instance, we're trying to harness the collective intelligence of thousands of people all over the world to come up with plans for what we can do as humans about global climate change. Using the online forum we've created, over 200 people have already entered or created 21 plans for emission reductions in different regions of the world. They've used computer simulations to predict the results of those plans, debated the pros and cons, and voted on the plans they find most desirable. In another project, we're trying to use the same statistical approach used in individual intelligence tests to create group intelligence tests. We've found that just as with individuals, a single statistical factor for a group can predict the group's performance on a very wide range of tasks. We've also found that this group's collective intelligence is not strongly correlated with the average or maximum intelligence of the individuals in the group, but it is correlated with the average social intelligence of the group members and, perhaps surprisingly, with the proportion of females in the group. Soon, we hope to use tests like this with other groups like top management teams and product development teams to predict how flexible and adaptive they can be in a wide range of different situations. We also hope to increase their collective intelligence by, for example, giving them better electronic collaboration tools. In the long run, as our world becomes more and more closely connected, with many kinds of electronic communication. It will become more and more useful to view all the humans and computers on our planet as part of a single global brain. And perhaps our success as a species will depend on how well we're able to use our global collective intelligence to make choices that are not just smart, but also wise.
Thank you. All right, Tom, thank you. That's actually a very nice note to end on.